Good evening and welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We will be getting started in just a few moments. We'll be getting started here in just a moment. Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Prayer Meeting. We will be getting started here in just a second. <clears throat> if you've just jumped on and you're able to hear me, give me a, a thumbs up. That way I know that you can hear me and everything's coming in clearly this evening. All right, we have one more minute yet. If you just jumped on, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you can hear me and we'll uh, get started. Give it just another 30 seconds or so. Am I coming in out there? Can you hear me all right? If so, just give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you can hear me and we'll get started. There we go. We got it. All right. I want to wait till 7, but then I don't want to wait till 7. I want to get started right now. Um, and actually, i got to get my Bible here real quick. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 12. All right, so we'll jump in that here in just one second. All right, good evening and welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. Pastor Don Mass with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church. This is one of my favorite nights of the week, and I'm glad that you're with me. It's good to, it's good to see you. Um... We are located, Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, we are located at 903 North 4th Street uh, in the Juniata section of Altoona. And I welcome you to come and visit our church. We, we begin service at 1045. And I would love for you to come and experience the warmth of faith and, and the love and the strength of Jesus with our church family. And if you're new to our Wednesday nights, it's fairly laid back here. Uh, each week I share a short lesson from the Word of God, and then we pray together. And I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to get you thinking more biblically. And as we come together in prayer, our, our focus is to be praying for each one of these folks that we mentioned tonight um, all throughout the week. Keep them on your list. And... You know, prayer is all about bringing comfort, bringing hope, bringing strength, bringing renewal. All of us together, all that power. So, tonight, tonight we are going to talk about throwing in the towel. We're going to talk about giving up. Have you ever felt like, you know, giving up? Have you ever, have you ever thought like, you know, I can't take this anymore? I, I can't continue down the same path. I'm done. I'm giving it up. I'm, I'm, I'm walking away. 
I mean, these phrases have the power to change the direction or to just simply change life in general. And as a pastor, as a shepherd, I get calls, I get messages all the time dealing with this specific issue. And I want you to know that I care deeply. I care deeply about each and every one of you. And I wanted to share this with you. And so, I got a question. Actually, it was more of a comment this week from last week's prayer meeting. And it was from a prayer meeting listener. And they asked this. It was more like a statement, I guess. I'm going to give up on God. I'm tired. I've prayed for Him to take away all this hurt, all of my problems, but nothing, nothing has changed. Why doesn't God do something? I thought He was supposed to care for me. And so, I read that message, and I thought about it. I prayed about it. And, you know, it brought a tear to my eye as well. And so tonight I wanted to address it because I thought it would be a question that all of us have grappled with. And so I wanted to address the first issue about giving up on God. God's love is everlasting. It's, it's unfailing. And so here's how I want to answer this question. I want to share with you this general reminder that God cares for each and every one of us more deeply than we, can other, than we can understand, than we can fathom. His love transcends time and circumstances and our own forgetfulness. Even when we unconditionally, or un, how do I want to say this? Even when we unintentionally turn away or become preoccupied. Because, you know, the devil's good at taking our eyes off the ball. His unwavering, God's unwavering gaze remains upon you and me. And so, you know, I want you to frame it this way. Imagine a love that stretches beyond the vastness of, of our skies and, 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 and reaches into eternity. That's the love that God has for each of us. It's not fleeting. It's not conditional. It's steadfast. It's everlasting. When we fall, when we stumble, when we lose our way, you know, we take the wrong path, He doesn't abandon us. Instead, He waits with open arms for us to come home, ready to embrace us once more. And so, the Bible echoes this truth. I think it's Psalm 106. Psalm 106 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Forever is a long time. So let those words sink in a little bit. They carry the weight of eternity. The promise that His love is not bound by our time, our circumstances here in this world. And so take a moment tonight or tomorrow and just pause, you know, amidst all of life's hustle and all of this bustle and all of our distractions, all of these things that go on. And close your eyes and feel the warmth of his love just kind of surround you. You are cherished, you are remembered, and you are held in the embrace of, of a love that knows no end. Forever and ever, amen, right? As George Strait sings. May your heart overflow with gratitude, knowing that the Creator, the Creator of everything outside, everywhere, the Creator of all the galaxies, the stars, the ocean, everything that He created, He also created you. He also created me. He knows your name and He loves you beyond measure. And so the, the question 
also asked, why doesn't he take my problems away? Why doesn't he remove all this stuff out of my life when I ask him to do it? I thought about this a lot. And to be honest, and I learned this when I was younger, if you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. You know, I don't know the answer that covers every life situation. But as I mentioned before, God sees the whole picture. We only see this much of it. We only see a part. And someday we will understand when we see Jesus in heaven, when we're standing there before him. But until then, the Bible tells us we live by faith, not by sight. That's 2 Corinthians. And often God answers our prayers not by taking our problems away. You know this, I've talked about this. But by giving us the strength and the wisdom to deal with them. Yes, when problems arise, we all wish that they would just, we could just get like a little thing and just say, off with you, you know? Problems go away. Like some, get some cleaning spray and just wash all these problems away, but it doesn't work that way. We all wish they would just go away, just like a genie gives us three wishes to make everything happen. It doesn't work that way. We live in real life. But sometimes God wants us to turn to Him and instead, ask him for strength to stand up to, you know, these problems that we're dealing with. And when we do this, he has promised to grant it. In the Bible, in the Bible, I know the Apostle Paul said, I can do all things. I can do everything through him, through Christ, who gives me strength. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And so, if you have your Bible handy, turn to James, towards the back of the Bible. We're going to look towards the back of the Bible, James. And we're going to look at chapter 1. Chapter 1. And we're going to look verses 2 through 12 tonight. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 12. Consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and, un and unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his exhilaration, in his exaltation. But let the rich boast in his humiliation because he will pass away like a flower of the field, where the sun rises together with a scorching wind, drying up the grasses, its flowers fall off, and its beautiful appearance perishes. In the same way, the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities. Blessed is the one who endures trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this evening. And so, as I shared at the beginning tonight, as I shared, many of us have said, you know, I can't go on, I'm, I'm going to stop, I can't continue this anymore, I can't take it, I want to give up. There are three things that cause us to think these way, this way, and it involves feelings, emotions, all those things you should always let go. You should never listen to your feelings or your emotions, particularly because feelings will lie to you. 
And so if you're angry, if you're feeling some kind of way, go take a walk and come back when you're clear-headed, first of all. And so the three things that make you kind of feel like you want to give up, first of all, the devil and his workers. Throughout their, through their involvement, we can be tempted to stop waiting on God for solutions and instead seek our own way out. Because you know, we all want to say, you know, we can do this. You know, for years I've done it myself and everything's been great. Has it? The enemy may try to redirect us to focus away from Jesus and on to negative emotions and feelings. You know, if, if he can make us feel helpless and hopeless, then he is successful in doing what? In distracting us from God. And then number two is the wonderful, or I guess you want to say the world, the not so wonderful world in our culture. You can't watch the news anymore without seeing our world spiraling into craziness and into hell. Ungodly people are always standing with you, ready to give you advice, aren't they? Ready to shine some light on it, ready to give a believer some advice. Not good advice, by the way, but rather a kick in the shin, or maybe to trip us up. We need God's wisdom to set ourselves apart from their thinking, the, the worldly thinking, and yet stay connected enough to share God's message with the lost, sharing the hope and the love with them. And then also the third thing would be our own flesh. We have a tendency to do what feels good and to do what benefits us in the short term. But God's way is always the best way and the most fulfilling. If you have ever wanted to give up, you've probably been influenced by one or more of these factors that I just shared with you tonight. But God has purpose for your trials. He allows in our life these things to happen. They produce perseverance. They produce endurance that help us to mature as Christian people. When we look at these things... From that perspective, we can actually feel, we can actually say, consider it all joy to have struggles. So every day, everyday problems that are in our lives that make us pretty exhausted. And so that's why we're often tired. And that's why you're tempted to escape. That's why you're tempted to give up. No matter how hopeless no matter how hopeless your situation is right this very second, no matter how, how you're feeling, God offers us the grace to keep going. The Bible holds the key, and this is what it says. Don't give up. No, rather, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. That's Second Chronicles. And then, you know, when we talk about, you know, not giving up, to not give up, you know, when that familiar sin is still crouching at your door after all these years, and it's waiting to pounce on you with temptation. The Bible tells us no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way out, a way to escape, that you may be able to endure it. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And then when we say don't give up, when you feel that deep soul weariness from the long battles with persistent weakness, you know, because we can start to feel weak over time, right? In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And don't give up when you long asked You've long sought and knocked for prayers that have not been answered. We talked about that earlier. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, And he told them, 
the parable of the persistent widow, to the effect that they ought always to pray and to not lose heart. So always to pray and to not lose heart. So whatever you're going through, continue to talk to him. And don't give up when the devil is just throwing darts of doubt at you. Throw in darts of doubt, you know, and they make you feel some kind of way. You know, I passed out to all the men, and I have it downstairs, a coin last week, or two weeks ago, with Ephesians chapter 6 on it. It says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, and with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. So you're going to put on the full armor of God. And you can't give up when you have multiple pressures all at one time. Do you know when, when this stuff happens, you know, it, it, it all happens at one time. You know, it all just kind of stacks on top of each other, right? When everything seems relentless. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, But as servants of God, we command ourselves in every way, be great endurance in affliction, hardship, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger. Have endurance. And then don't give up when the place or the project the Lord has assigned you, where he has put you, is hard. And the harvest does not look promising. Because it says in Galatians chapter 6, it says, And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And don't give up when your reputation is damaged because you are trying to be faithful to Jesus. And so Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 says, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my accounts. And then don't give up when waiting on God seems to be an endless thing. Because you know there are times, just like the person asked me this week, I've been asking, I've been asking, I've been asking, and I'm not hearing anything. The waiting can seem endless, but it tells us in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, it says, Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But when who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And don't give up. When you failed in sin, you know, when that temptation lurks its head and you give in, don't flounder or wallow. Instead, repent again. Repent. Give your, you get your eyes off of yourself again and fix your eyes back onto Jesus. Get up and get back in the fight. In 1 John chapter I think it's 1 John chapter 1. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 2, If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. So living in faith and things not seen. Now, you know, faith is, is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. That's what Hebrews tells us. Jesus reminds us tonight in the Bible, For the gate is narrow and the way is hard, which leads to life. And those who find it are few. That's Matthew chapter 7. But the way has always, for each and every one of us, the way has always been hard. And it's not going to get any easier as a Christian. And you are not alone in your difficulty. You are sur surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who have passed this way ahead of you. You know, there are other people that have been through the same thing. Many have suffered far more and have remained faithful. Remember them and, it, and, and imitate 
their faith. And above all, remember the Jesus Christ. Remember Him. Remember His suffering. Remember what He went through because Jesus knows your work. And He understands your life's battle. And He understands the valleys that you're in. His grace will be given to you in your time of need. And it will be sufficient for each one of you. Even at the very worst times. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And you know I said this before. Therefore I will boast all the more glad of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm. So, look to Jesus. Fight the good fight of the faith. And finish the race. And when you have done the will of God, you will receive what is promised, His great an eternal award. Remember, eternity is a long time. The hardship of this life is not long at all when you compare it to the measure of eternity. And by your endurance, you will gain your lives. That's what it tells us in Luke. And so we need to keep this, these verses in our hearts and in our minds. Sometimes we feel tired. Sometimes we feel like we're just spinning our wheels and we're not getting anywhere. And that we are falling and we are failing to meet expectations of others. I'm sure you felt that way. I know we all have. And sometimes we feel bogged down in things that need doing. You know, sometimes we feel like we just can't get ahead. Right? Sometimes we just feel like we can't continue. But He knows that. And He always equips those whom He calls and that we are adequate, and we can do all things through Him. He gives us the strength, even when we are tired, even when we want to give up. He, he, he always knows. He always knows that we are, you know, here's what we need to do. We, we always need to understand that we are redeemed, we are forgiven, we are strengthened, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore we knew we know that moving forward is the right, is the best, is the wisest thing for us to do. Living by what we feel, living by our emotions, they're gonna lie to you. That's the world. That's a deadly choice if we live by what we feel. That's a deadly choice. Living by what we know based on the unchanging truth of Scripture is a life-giving choice. And you can make a choice right now. You can make a choice right now because you know what? Maybe you were wanting to give up. Or maybe you're wanting to search for something. There's this emptiness. There's this yearning for purpose. You know, we live in this world of great uncertainty. And maybe you're carrying these heavy burdens on your back. These regrets, maybe guilt. You know, maybe there's just this simple ache in your heart tonight. You know, I know how that could be fixed. I know how that could be fixed. The personal relationship with Jesus. Through a personal relationship, He offers us a new beginning. A, a path filled with compassion, with forgiveness and eternal life. It is a journey not of solitude, not of just resting and relaxing, but of fellowship with one and another. You know, in its fellowship with the one who promises to never leave us, to never forsake us, he keeps all of his promises. And so tonight, if your heart is seeking peace, is seeking purpose, I encourage you to make the choice tonight to make a decision tonight to follow Jesus to open your Bible to start living like Jesus to change the way you live making a decision right now this is the most important decision you're ever going to make in your life when you close your eyes for the last time it's going to be too late and your decision's already made that in itself is a decision, and it's sad. 
It's truly sad. And you might be thinking, you know, Don, Pastor Don, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. You know, I want Jesus. I, I, I want what you're talking about. I want my sins forgiven. What do I do? How do I do this? You know? I didn't grow up in church, or maybe I did, but you know, no one ever told me this. You don't wait any longer. Right now can be the point in time that your life changes forever. And we can walk together with Jesus by our sides. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to clean up your life. You don't have to change everything. Just to ask him to come into your heart and into your life. He offers you a message of hope. In John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever... That whoever, that's you and I, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I mean, think about that. God gave us Jesus to take away all of our sins, all of our regrets, all of our mistakes, all of our wrong turns that we've ever made, to carry that heavy weight so we don't have to carry it anymore. He handed us each a gift of, of love, of grace, and of purpose. In Romans chapter 10, it tells you what needs to be done. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so first of all, you have to acknowledge your need. Recognizing that you've stumbled, that you've failed, that you've made mistakes, that you hold, are holding this guilt that we've made choices that we regret. But here's the beautiful part. Jesus invites us to come as we are, imperfect. His arms are wide open for us. And then we need to turn around. Repentance is what we need to do. It's about changing our direction. It's about adjusting your sails in the ship, turning away from what harms you, you know, from that sin, from those roadblocks, from that brokenness of this world, and embrace a new course catching that wind of hope. And then the next step is follow him, follow Jesus. Picture watch you know, just picture yourself walking side by side with him. It's not about religious rituals, it's not about all that stuff that we get so caught up in. It's not about any of that. When it comes down to it, it's about you and him. It's about that personal relationship. It's about you know, trust that He is who He claims to be, the Savior, the one who brings healing and purpose to our lives. And then finally, you have to believe. Faith needs to not be complicated. Churches nowadays make this way too complicated. And they use a lot of really, really big words that make it even more complicated, right? It's as simple as just trusting that Jesus is real, his love is authentic, and he has a purpose and a plan for your life, for my life. We need to take that first step towards him. It's like embarking on this adventure, this journey, filled with hope, filled with promise, filled with love, all of those things, peace and comfort. You could start that new adventure right now with this short prayer. If you're ready to turn away from those things that have been keeping you away from God, do it. Do it now. And here's the prayer. Sorry, I'm just taking a note down right there. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. Robin, so here's the prayer, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness, Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and he rose from the dead, and tonight I want to turn from my sins and I invite Jesus to come into my heart and into my life 
to take control of all of this. I'm going to turn it all over to you. I want to trust and follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. That'll get me started. And so tonight is prayer meeting. And of course, I'm going to hear, hey, you went over time. <laughs> When I put these together, I want to talk about issues. I want to talk about things that each of us deal with in life. You know, I, I, I want, because we all struggle with things, you know, that life is difficult. And so each week it's, it's, it's about coming up and, and, and listening to the Lord and, and having him lay it on you. Like, hey, what are people dealing with this week? And so... I want to turn to prayer right now, and I want you, if you have a pen handy, if you have a piece of paper, I want you to write these folks down, because like I said in church this past Sunday, we need to seriously, it's one thing just to say, hey, you know what, hey, I'll pray for you. You put in a, co a comments on Facebook or whatever, hey, I'll pray for you. Praying for you. I want you to take down each and every person. Together, we can all be praying for each and each other, one another. Just think of the impact that's going to make. So will you join me in prayer right now? Father, thank you for your unwavering goodness, your faithfulness, your protection. Lord, thank you for giving us the strength to not give up when we just want to throw in the towel. And Father, tonight we lift up our church family and everyone facing different challenges in their life. Where they want to walk a different way. You know, they want to go down a different road. Or, or, or maybe they're dealing with health issues. And Lord, if they're dealing with health issues, just touch them and remind them of your love and of your hope. And, and, and give their families, give families that peace and that comfort that only you can give them. Grant wisdom to the doctors or grant wisdom actually to anybody who's requesting, who's asking and praying for wisdom tonight, Lord. Give them understanding. And so tonight, Lord, I just want to lift up Jennifer Phelan. Um, a friend that was just mentioned here on prayer meeting who, who is in need of a heart transplant. Lord, we lift her up to you. You know the situation there, Lord. And we know that you, ha you are the, the great physician. And Lord, we trust in you for answers. And Lord, we also lift up Brother Anthony English, who's still recovering from lung surgery, Lord. He's healing well, Lord. Thank you so much for bringing him through that. Just keep your hand on him and also on his wife, Polly. And Father, I just lift up Glenna and Don Rabenstein tonight. I also lift up the Ulrey family as, as we lost uh, Aunt Betty this, evening, or this morning, Lord. Lord, we know where she is and she's making everyone smile tonight. And Lord, I'm just thankful that you gave us the blessing of having Betty in our lives. I just thank you for that so much. She always made me laugh. She always made me smile. We will miss her so, so much. And I'm just thankful that she knew the word. When Lord, when we were praying last week, when we were going through uh, Psalm 23, she started to, to say it. And Lord, I'm just so thankful for that. Just bring peace and comfort to the family during this difficult time. And Father, we just lift up Sherry and Ed Horner, Lord. Ed Horner's still recovering from his health issues. Tonight, also, we pray for Tammy Lingenfelder and Danny Campbell, Chris Wilson and his fiance Victoria Musselman, and their son, Joe Biddle and his family. And Lord, tonight, Charles Gilliard. As you know, he's missing his wife of over 45 plus years, Lord. Just comfort him as he takes a step each and every day. We lift up the Snyder family, the Stell family. And Lord, we just ask that you put a hedge of protection around those families, Lord, and that you help them in every way that they possibly need tonight. And I lift up Josh Jacobs and his kids, his family, his mom, Eli, Owen, and Amia. 
lift them up to you. And Megan Christophic, Lord, I just lift her up. Lord, I just ask that you work in her life. And you just open the door, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to, to create that opportunity for her to have that personal relationship with you, Lord. For her to see the truth, to turn against the things of this world. And Father, we also lift up tonight Scott Beck for his ongoing health issues and Peach and her family, her grandson, and her brother Woody, and Linda Fuller, Lord, she gave us an update on Audra. We just lift her, uh, Audra up, that you just give her the strength to move her legs, to get those legs working again, Lord. Tonight we lift up Jordan and Robin Phillips, and their business, and their family. Continue to keep them hungry for you. And Alan and Jen Gallagher, Carrie and Kevin Prusnak and their family. Stacy Miller Singer, Carrie B and her kids and family. And Lord, I just lift up tonight Megan DeGaulle and her daughter Mia. Lord, I just ask that you be with them. I know they're dealing with a lot of harsh things. Lord, this world could be harsh. This world could be terrible, Lord. But with you in it, with you protecting, with you reminding them of your love, your your, 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 your comfort, your peace. Just give all that to them tonight, Lord. And we lift up Cookie to Stefano at the village in Martinsburg, Lord, that she could walk. Give her the strength. I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me, Lord. Give her the strength that she needs tonight. We lift up Doug Butler, Tyler Magaha and his family, and also his business. Edie Elizabeth Johnson Lowe and her family. John and Linda Rudisill and their family. Rose Murrow tonight and her family. Joe Stupio and his wife Peggy. And Lord, we lift up the McGee family, Warren and Holly and the kids. And Lord, we just lift up his business too. Lord, give him that wisdom, give him that direction. Just open the doors that need to be opened for him to move forward, Lord. Also, Brian and Teresa Martin and their family. And Jolie Hercheck and Jolie's family and, 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 and Jolie's kids just lift up Jolie's son to you tonight. And my cousin Tina and her husband Jose and the kids and Steve Stevens and Dean Branda and his wife. And Lord, we lift up the Barry family, Ralph, Christine, Tyler, Braden, and Jordan. And also Christine's father, Merle. And Ralph's mom, we lift her up to you as well. Pastor Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and kids and grandkids. And Lord, just be with the Bo Meisel family. Be with Aaron and Daquan, John and Kathy. Lord, be with the, the entire Bo Meisel family as they lost a son, a stepson, a few weeks ago. And Father, tonight we also lift up the Mucle family. Vincent Mucle, his wife Lillian, baby Lorenzo, Castro, Oakland. And also Vincent's mom and dad, Brenda and Vincent. We pray for the DiStefano family, Cookie, Liz, Robert, Danielle, Dave, and Dave, the entire family. We just lift them up to you. The First Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller and their families. And Father, tonight we lift up Lawrence and Kayla Rissler, and Lord, they just suffered a loss in their family a few weeks ago, Lord. We just ask that you bring their family comfort during this difficult time, and also, Lord, continue to bless their business as they grow. And Father, we also just pray for our community. And Father, I want to lift up my son, Elliot his fiance Becca, my wife Angelina, Becca's family in Texas. Lift them up to you, Lord. And I just ask that you just touch each and every member. Protect all of us from the world, from the evil one, Lord, as only you can. And pray for our community tonight. We lift up our neighbors, our family, asking 
for your blessings and guidance. We, we, we pray for all the missionaries, Lord, who are shining your light all around the world and right here in our own country. Continue to protect them. Keep them safe as they spread your message and serve others. Pray for all the wars and the rumors of wars, what's going on in Ukraine and Israel and Russia, the Middle East. Lord, we just ask that you protect the families, Lord. We ask that you protect and you bring peace to the region as only you can. And we pray for our nation, for the, the wisdom and the righteousness of our leaders. Protect our, you know, for our protection for our military and a renewed sense of unity and purpose for all. And tonight, Lord, I continue to pray for our church family, each and every person that comes in and sits down in those pews. I just lift up each and every one of them, for they're struggling with different things. They have different challenges. They have different issues, Lord. You know each one. You hear each one. You hear all their tears, Lord. I just lift them up to you. You can strengthen them. You can bring them solutions. You can help them move forward in their journey, Lord, their walk with you. Lord, thank you so much for your unfailing love, your answered prayers, all of the blessings that you've given to us. We trust in your grace to lighten our burdens. Fill us with your peace and strengthen our hope and faith. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Amen. So friends, I just want to thank you for listening this evening. I mean, we all struggle. You know, we all have these times when we say we want to give up. And you know what the Bible says now. If someone you know in your, in your circle is going through something where they need to hear reasons why not to give up, share this message with them, will you? And pray for them. And lastly, just come visit us this Sunday, Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, 903 North 4th Street in Juniata. We start at 1045. This Sunday we're going to be talking about Independence Day. We're going to be talking about our country, you know, America, our nation, how it was founded the 4th of July as we enter that week. Don't worry about dressing up coming to church. Just come as you are. You can visit us and learn more online at a1sbc.org. That's a1sbc.org. And if you want to send us a letter, if you don't live around here, you can't visit our church, send us a letter, 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. You can help support our ministry, help it to grow. I thank you so much for listening tonight. Again, please be praying for your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Pray for me and my family, too, if you would. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Have a good night. See ya.